it's just a circle. But people seem to have a lot of opinions on it. There's people who just cannot stand roundabouts. Well, they slow people down a little bit. And they decorate the intersections. You may be thinking, that belongs in Europe. I can't seem to get over the left, honey. Like them or not, roundabouts like the one I am standing on are being used more and more for intersections. And we wanted to know why. Traffic engineers used to have just two options for intersections, a stop sign or a stop light. That is until a new idea was brought from overseas. Roundabouts were invented in around 1970 or so in the United Kingdom. Over the next 20 years, roundabouts popped up across the UK, Australia and Europe. But when they came to the US in the 1990s, there was a, a, initially a little bit of a reluctance here in the US. For the last 40 years, Alan Glenn has specialized in roadway design, serving on national committees that establish the standards of how highways are laid out and playing a key role here in California, especially when it came to roundabouts. I actually was in charge of statewide design standards at Caltrans at the time that the uh, Brits were pushing them here on the U.S. When he and others finally gave the green light to roundabouts. It's uh, probably become one of the most effective tools in our toolbox because there's now hundreds of thousands of these across the U.S. Since roundabouts came to the U.S., their benefits have proven overwhelming. Here's why. For a normal intersection with a signal, there's 32 points where vehicles can cross paths with one another, or what experts call points of conflict. And in a roundabout, there's only eight. It eliminates all right angle and left turn conflicts. And when entering a roundabout, you can see I'm forced to slow down. I can't just barrel through it. And those are the reasons why statistics show that roundabouts are actually way more safe than stoplights and stop signs. We've seen in the U.S. over the last 20 to 30 years a 90% reduction in fatalities, a 76% reduction in injuries, 35% reduction in overall crashes, and a 50% reduction in crashes involving pedestrians. So we put these stats to the test right here in Sacramento. If you're familiar with Midtown, you know the streets go from roundabouts to stop signs depending on which corner you're on. So we filed a public records request for right here on G and 25th where there's a roundabout in the intersection. And we also asked for the same information a block away on G and 24th where there's a stop sign. Now our roundabout safety test proved true. There were five collisions on the intersection with a stop sign. Well, there were zero at the intersection a block away with a roundabout. So why not just replace all intersections with roundabouts? Roundabouts are not the ideal tool for every intersection. Uh, they require a larger footprint because um, they take more space. In 2021, a study from U-Haul found Roseville was one of the fastest growing cities in the nation. And as its public works director, Shaikowski has had to keep up with developing the city and its roads. You know, one of our first roundabouts was at the Galleria Mall. And then, you know, we'd put in a few at a time. Today, the city of Roseville has about 20 roundabouts with more coming. We're building one down the street near the fairgrounds. But besides the space needed for roundabouts, he says they can also cost a pretty penny for cities like Roseville. Our most recent roundabout, the cost all in for design and construction, over $7 million. Traffic signal probably run you about half a million dollars. Shaikowski says for new areas being developed, the cost is not as high. It's a balancing act. You look at the intersections with the worst accidents and see if you can do something like put a roundabout in. Down in Elk Grove, Glenn is working on a project that will connect Interstate 5 with State Route 99 and Highway 50 through Grantline Road. But it does go through the community of Sheldon. He had to figure out how to preserve Sheldon while creating room for a lot more traffic to go through. We evaluated one set of alternatives with signals and one set with roundabouts. The city council did prefer the roundabout solution. Is there any other traffic tool you think could become more popular like roundabouts have? One relatively new uh, 
configuration is what we call a diverging diamond, and uh, that is uh, very promising. He says this concept reverses the flow of traffic and eliminates the need to turn left across traffic. And he's right about them being up and coming. In fact, California's first diverging diamond was debuted in Manteca in 2020. As for roundabouts, if you don't like them, you may want to get used to them. So what I'm hearing is we are all going to be seeing more roundabouts. Yes, absolutely. I've certainly seen how many cars have been coming through just during our interview. Yeah. And no accidents. Yeah. <laughs>